Okay, just an interesting point. Yesterday we actually ran out of time. We were talking yesterday about Halloween rooted in Avedizar and all that. There's a very interesting story that happened in 1984. For those of you that are around, the Olympics were in LA. And that year, for a number of reasons, they asked the other Rabbi Geshen Shusterman to speak at the Neshei Chabad Convention in New York. And it was, he came from LA, the Olympics, you know, was, was a big thing. So his whole speech basically was about the lessons you learned from the Olympics. I heard all you learned from the Olympics. So later there was a magazine called the Yiddish Shaheim. They wanted his uh, speech printed in the Yiddish Shaheim, which is a half English, half Yiddish. It was a woman's magazine given up in the Sheikh Abad. But every article they put in there was first edited by the Rebbe. So they sent a speech, he wrote up a whole speech, and they sent it into the Rebbe to okay it, so to speak. <laughs> and the Rebbe answered, the Rebbe gave out and answered, I don't remember the exact question, but basically the Rebbe said, don't you know that the Olympics are rooted in Avedizara? Take the whole thing out. Anything you had to do with the Olympics, take it out. So his speech was like cut down from maybe five pages to one and a half pages because the whole, the whole thing was about the Olympics. Now it's interesting, ask anybody today. Ask anybody today, what's the Olympics? They say a competition between countries and sports. Nobody thinks today it might be rooted in Naveed Azadeh. But the Rebbe said, listen, Olympics, whatever you think about it today, but it originated in Naveed Azadeh, and therefore it's still Naveed Azadeh. Now, yes, there's a very important thing that the Rebbe said. Huh? The Rebbe said it is. Huh? But it, they have the Olympic torch? You know the Olympic torch? Where did that start from? Uh -oh. From the Greek gods. Okay? Uh -oh. So still rude enough it is other. The actual sports maybe not, but I'm saying the Rebbe was... Uh, think, no, it's not originated. The, the Rabbi, sports. Of course. What? The Greek culture was actually the competition. I understand, but the Rebbe... But the, now nobody looks at the Olympics as a, as a competition of gods, a religious. Uh, okay, weiter. Okay, so now... the. Yesterday, we started learning about dressing, you know, proper and modest and all that. Okay, now, we find in Teda that right is more prominent than left. Many, many dinim. Aveda, Vakayen, Chalitza. I mean, there's a lot of things that right is more prominent than left in Allah. Therefore, in many things, Torah says you have to give precedence to the right over the left. That means, let's say, for instance, you're taking a shower. So the proper halachic way of taking, like we said yesterday, Torah dictates how to live as a Jew. When you take a shower, halacha says like this, the first part of your body that you wash should be the head, because the head is the king of all the limbs of the body. Then when you're washing your body, you're supposed to wash if you're a right-handed person. You're supposed to wash your right hand first, then your left hand, your right leg first, and your left foot. In other words, if you're washing both of them, so Allah says you give precedence to the right. So therefore, you're supposed to wash your right hand first before the left hand, and, and right foot first before the left foot, and so on. Now, the exception of that is tying. Why is the exception of that tying? Because we find tying in Torah reference to uh, tefillin. Ukshartum le'isayidach, you tie tefillin on your hand. Which hand do you tie a right-handed person? What hand does he tie tefillin on? On the left hand. So therefore, Halacha says like this. What's the proper way of putting on your shoes if you're putting on both shoes? And they, let's say they have laces to them. So the proper halachic way of putting on shoes is you put on your right shoe first, then your left shoe, you tie the left shoe, and then you tie the right shoe. That is the proper way. Now, what happens if somebody is right-handed but left-footed? Because in Allah there's a concept of left-footed. What do you look at me like that? 
You never heard in halacha there's a concept of left foot? No, the left foot is stronger than his right foot, his right hand is stronger than his left hand. I'm like this. Like it, like it, like it, like okay, one second. They, where do you find the din of a left foot versus a right foot? By chalitza. Well, you know, the husband died without kids and you have to do chalitza. So there the woman has to put the shoe on her foot. So she's a left-handed, left-footed person. So in, it's interesting. In halacha they describe how do you, how do you know if you're left-footed or not? So in, in Shulach it says, in Poskim it says, if you're standing straight and subconsciously, which foot goes first? But a simpler way of defining that today is, listen, there are people that kick a ball with the right foot, there are people that kick a ball with the left foot. So you have people that have a stronger left foot and a stronger right foot. So then in Poskim it's a very interesting discussion. What happens if you're right-handed but left-footed? So what do you do with the shoes? What is... What, what do you, what's the writing, what are you left in, what's the, so they, they, bottom line they say, you do this way you're good, you do that way you're good. But I'm saying normally a person that's, let's say right handed and right footed, if you're right handed and right footed, so then the proper thing to do is put on your right shoe first, then your left shoe, tie the left shoe, then tie the right shoe. What's the reason? Once, because tying is tefillin, tefillin choshev on the left. But, and therefore when you take off your shoes, you do it in reverse. If you're untying your shoes, you're not lazy, and you untie your shoes, so then you untie the right, then untie the left, you take off the left shoe first and then the right shoe. You do the opposite of putting it on. But it's interesting, Torah says, again, Torah is a guide for Jewish life because, like we said yesterday, everything a Jew does is serving Hashem. If a Jew takes a shower, the way Hash, the Torah says, you wash your head first and then the right side and the left side, whatever. You don't have to write, by the way, you don't have to wash your right hand and right foot and then left hand and left foot. If you're washing the hands, the right hand goes first, the feet, the left foot goes first. But then, what Torah says is, when you do it that way, you're serving Hashem even by taking a shower because you're doing it the way Hashem tells us to do it. And that's what's unique about what? Don't you do the with your right hand? That's why you shouldn't use No, but because the kshi is al the weaker hand. So therefore, by kshida, we find the Torah says yotcha, mean the left hand. So it's a prominence in tying in the left hand. So why the left hand is used when, if he's a righty in the, in the restroom, as opposed to the right hand? Today it doesn't, because that's the hand you tied it to him. But today it doesn't apply. It's only when you don't use paper. So when do paper. you make the distinction between choshos and not choshos? Okay, so there's a lot of issues. I'm not getting into all the left-handed people. There's far more already written, Itariyad, the Seyf of the Stick written on left-handed people in Encyclopedia Talmud. There's a lot in Itariyad. Um, for instance, basically what it boils down to, if it's something that you're doing with the right hand because of prominence, then if you're left-handed, you do it with the left hand. For instance, there's a whole discussion in Allah. One second. What? So carrying in turn in public, you do what most people do. But, for instance, when you cover your eyes for Shema. Okay, I'm not getting into all the details. What hand do you cover your, what, what hand do you cover your, your face with? Your eyes. You use the right hand, you use the left hand. Uh, there's a very interesting machlekes. By washing for hamaitzi, and also negovas in the morning. What hand, if you're left-handed, what hand do you wash first? Do you wash your right hand first, or do you wash your left hand first? There's a lot of, it's interesting, most opinions in halacha, by the way, mm. say that even a left-handed person washes the right hand first. Mm. Prima Godim holds that, Archas Chaim holds that. The Peil, the Peil, we don't pass them like that, because it's a machsadik, and the Chuvis writes clearly, not like the Prima Godim, and he says a left-handed person washes the left hand first. But you'll find in, in by the from of world, most people that are left-handed will still buy Natil Siddai and wash the right hand first. Same with Shema? Shema, most people, some people use the left. What? I didn't, they write because it has to do with the base of Mikdash, whatever. Isn't the Tuma higher No. Talk about the feet. What do you learn from the Khalitsa? No, there's a concept called left-footed. 
strong foot, and it's a really easy concept. <coughs> okay, anyway. Um, okay. Another interesting din, one second. Another interesting din, and this Kitzish Hunar brings down also, other Paschal, other Svarim bring it down too. You shouldn't put on two clothing at the same time. If a mime of the Rebbe, of the um, Rebbe, I think it is, that says you shouldn't take off two clothing also at the same time. It's Koshal Lashikha. If you do it, it makes you forget, except by shoes. The post can write, by shoes, you can put on both shoes at the same time. But otherwise, otherwise, the post can say, you shouldn't put on, sometimes you have people put on like a shirt and an undershirt together, to, you know, whatever. It says in Allah, you shouldn't do that, because it makes you forget your learning. Same thing. You should not take off two garments at the same time. So a lot of times, let's say a person that's wearing not a button shirt, but they, you know, whatever, that thing. So they'll take off a sweater and a shirt at the same time. So it says in, it's a halacha, you shouldn't do it, because <coughs> kosher le What about pants and socks at the same time? Also not. The only thing that the Arach HaShulchan brings down by shoes, it doesn't matter. I took off my socks, and the pants are coming off also, but the, the socks... You shouldn't take them off together. You shouldn't intentionally, they came off, they came off, uh, you know what I mean? But, you take your shoes and socks off together? I'd like to see you do that one. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I don't know, I just see it says that by shoes you're allowed to do it. No, I said that even though you don't put on two clothing together, two articles of clothing you take off, but by shoes it doesn't matter. Whatever. Okay. Next. What? <coughs> we're not there yet. But okay. I mean, we're going to get there soon. But the same thing, Allah says that again, the proper Torah way of getting dressed is from top to bottom and getting undressed bottom to top. In other words, somebody, let's say, is putting on a shirt and a pair of pants. So first you put on the shirt, and then you put on the pair of pants. Then you put on your socks. Um, if you're taking them off, you should take off the pants first, and then the shirt. Same thing. To what degree? To what degree? If a person also wears his jacket, does he have to put on everything, including the jacket? No, no, no. It's like by the hands. You don't have to... You don't have to... If you go to the mikvah, you don't have to put on your undershirt, before the bottom stuff. Your undershirt tells cotton shirt and jacket and tie and then, no, it means undershirt, underpants, shirt, pants, you know, then you do it in the levels. You do first top to bottom, the bottom to top, that's all. You know, that, that's, that's how far it goes. Huh? Okay, that's uh, Yes. Even if you're not coming out of a shower, you're just getting dressed. You put on the top, going down. It makes sense. Top is more prominent than left, than bottom, correct? Higher and lower. Yes, I understand, but there's higher and lower. So higher, so, and taking off is the reverse. A lot of people do a lot of things the opposite way. That's why people are crazy, because a lot of people don't do things that... No. No, no, this is clear in Allah. There's no machlekes. Probably one of the few things there's no argument about. What? This is an halacha or Of? This is an halacha? Halacha. Yeah? Okay. Um, you put on your right shoe, then your left shoe. You tie the left shoe, then the right shoe. Well, you put both together. Okay. 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 Okay.